I've never really did an extensive cloud painting before, but if there is one thing I learned from my experience, it's wet on wet and dry brushing are your best friends. I had to do a lot of that while creating these clouds. Oh, and go back into them again and again and again. I found that I needed to go back painting the sky multiple times. I had to have it look just right. In order to do that, I looked very carefully at the photo and tried to mimic the clouds and how they feel while applying the paint. There were a lot of variations of clouds. In the top left, they were mostly big and soft and they were closer to the viewing plane. And since the paint was dry, I had to reapply some blues in certain areas and then reapply some whites and grays. I did a lot of blending in order to get that soft appearance. In some cases, I literally made the brush go in circles until the clouds appeared fluffy to me. It appeared in the picture that some of the clouds were breaking apart, forming streaks and lines in the skyline. These were quite possibly the easiest clouds to do because they just involved lines. And I played with the direction a little more from the photo in order to kind of lead the viewer towards the sun. But naturally, most of them were actually pointing to the sun. This is also a lot easier to do if the paint is wet because you can use also a dry brush to create the streaks. But you need to have the sky wet in order to accomplish that. And since the sky is not two-dimensional, and it's actually a huge three-dimensional volume, I had to like pay attention to the clouds and the shapes they made as they receded towards the distance. That's why if you notice, clouds were getting smaller towards the center that was closest to the sun. In the top right corner, the clouds appear a lot more different than the ones in the left. And I kind of like the variations in the photo, which is one of the reasons why I picked the painting, mainly for the mountain, but also for the clouds. I just didn't realize how hard they were gonna be. And there's more separation of sky and clouds in certain areas. And since more sky is visible, I had to reapply a dark sky blue and then apply white again to make the clouds. Lots of dry brushing was involved also to smooth out the clouds and give them a fluffy appearance but in this scenario in the top right, they are more solid and appear to have more structure, not big and fluffy like the ones in the left. In order to make some sense on the way I worked, I actually worked from furthest from the sun first and as I got closer, I started using warmer and warmer colors. That way as I painted, I didn't have to keep grabbing different tones of color constantly. I could just focus on one tone and if I had to make it warmer or cooler it wasn't that much of a big transition. In case you're wondering, the main colors I use for painting the clouds are zinc white, my black mixture of alizarin crimson and viridian and hints of blue, mainly ultramarine blue and hints of cadmium yellow as well. It all depends on the picture plane. The closer to the sun, it will be more yellow and less blue, and again, hints of blue and yellow. I felt it was necessary to repaint the sky in a lot of areas. In order to do clouds, your focus shouldn't be just painting the clouds themselves, but adding back the sky in areas like the cuts and gaps. And the color of the sky varied depending on the location. It was actually a darker tone of ultramarine blue towards the top and a lighter one towards the bottom. And right below the clouds where the sun is, it was even more and more pale with some yellow. Towards the bottom, there's these clouds that are a lot smaller than the ones that are very high in the sky. And underneath them, the sky is very light. And there's this nice transition from pale blue to yellow that I try to capture going towards the sun. And the, the yellow becomes kind of a greenish tone since it mixes with the blue. This was probably one of my favorite areas to paint, getting that nice transition. Also the clouds on the bottom, they're a lot smaller. What I like about these clouds is it gives you a great sense of scale. How even though the mountains are pretty tall, those clouds that are above them, as high as they are, they're nowhere near as high as the other clouds, way above in the stratosphere.
Also based on the positioning of the clouds, whether they were more to the left or more to the right, I'd apply different amounts of white and yellow. The ones closer to the right where the sun is were more brighter and there was a yellowish tone. But besides the yellowish tone, as you can see there's actually a hint of green in there and that has to do with blue and yellow. The sky is obviously blue and when blue is mixed with yellow, green forms. So it's natural that there's an appearance of green in that yellow sunlight. I try emphasizing the bright sharp lights on the clouds that were closer to the right to give a sense of the sun. Also, besides very thick fluffy clouds, there's also streaks of clouds that have not taken full form and I tried capturing them as well. In order to do that, I would apply some sky color and then streaks of white or yellowish white and then go back into it with a dry brush. Dry brushing is the key to clouds, at least that's what I learned. And this is technically my first painting that had a lot of clouds in it. Since there's a sun in the sky among the clouds, I had to be very careful how I painted the clouds nearby it. In some scenarios, you barely see the actual clouds because the sunlight is just piercing right through them. And because of that, the light from the sun is encasing them in sunlight. A lot of repetition had to go into making these clouds because they were tiny and in streaks. So I had to go back again and again with pale yellow because the sun was actually lighting them up and I would carve out the sky with blue here and there and again dry brushing. Dry brushing to smooth things out but I would go back and add highlights later again. I found it very interesting also that there was a sense of green where the clouds and sky met in close proximity to the sun. Probably because blue and yellow make green, you get this greenish appearance. I tried capturing it close to the sun. And the further the clouds are from the sun, the yellow tone dies out a little. That gradual change helps establish the presence of the sun. The clouds also close to the sun are a lot tinier because they are further away from the viewing plane and it makes sense. Things become smaller in the distance in comparison to the clouds on the very top which are in ways closer but not really that close since they're really high. They're a lot bigger. This is something I tried to exaggerate a little more in the actual painting versus the photo. One reason I kept going back to the clouds again and again multiple times is the color. It had to have a sense of unity. Even though there were so many different clouds in the sky, the thing that united them is the sun and how it affected the color. The thing that affected them is where they were in the sky and the sun. That affected the color and because of that, I went back to make sure they had this uniform look that gradually changed in color towards the bottom where it would become from cool tones to more warm tones. The clouds on the top right, I changed them from how they looked in the photo. I made them more directional. I kind of wanted the viewer to be led towards the sun. So I felt it was necessary to paint them in a circular direction that had a pattern that led all the way to the sun. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. I have one more video to go, so stay tuned for the final video of this painting. Also check out my Instagram, not your typical painter, where I have other paintings, including the ones I did in Greece. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye.